Alright guys, welcome back to God's Country Shooting Outdoors. I am your host, Chad. Um, it's been a few days since I've gotten the Grendel test results out. Um, so I'm finally getting around to getting those results out. I'd like to have had them out you know, a couple of days after the fact. But I'm very busy, so just bear with me. Alright, so I am excited to share the results with you. Um, I won't talk all the way through the results. I'll put the results on one side or the other um, as we talk about them. But I just want to say that I was really surprised with this Grendel. When I bought um, the Grendel a few years ago, and I do want to say this, Ruger has a wonderful, wonderful service department. When I bought that uh, Ruger Predator, uh, the bolt did not feed very well. And uh, I called them. They said, send it back. I sent it back a month, month and a half later. I get the gun back. They would replaced the bolt. They would replaced, uh, uh, done some work on the feeding ramp. They replaced uh, the magazine well. Sent it back to me. Um, no real questions asked. Uh, so I, I do want to say Ruger does pretty well on their servicing of their guns. I bought that gun though um, I really wasn't that sure what to expect. I really didn't um, do a whole lot of examining into that. I knew it was going to be less than the Creedmoor as far as uh, its capabilities but I thought you know hey this might be a wonderful gun for coyote hunting and uh, so I decided to go ahead and buy it. I also thought it would be a great gun to suppress. So I bought it. Uh, but I'm, I'm really just recently getting into the whole uh, what are the ballistic capabilities of the 6.5 Grendel. Um, overall, I was pretty impressed with it. You've kind of got to look at the bullets. We're going to show those bullets some more uh, throughout the video. Um, but I, I was really surprised at how well the Grendel did. Uh, if you're not necessarily a big fan of the 243, this might be a great little caliber to start your young people or kids on, especially if you're looking for a gun um, for zero to say $200 yards for coyotes um, and an entry level uh, gun for um, deer hunting. So let's go over some of this. Let's start out with the Hornady SSTs. All right, so the Hornady SSTs, um, I like the SSTs for deer hunting. I've used them in several other guns. And the 6.5 Grendel is a 113 grain weight. Um, I'll put the box posted at velocities and energies um, on the side. And then the extended velocities, energies, and trajectories is something I just had to come up with uh, looking uh, through the Hornady for uh, DF or whatever it's called, a ballistics calculator, which I do use a lot. Um, so the SST, uh, one thing I will say on these bullets is I will put on the side the, the 6.5 uh, millimeter bullet and then what the overall recovered mushroom, the best that I could uh, measure it, what size the mushroom was uh, beside, on the side notes, one side or the other. Um, and you can recover bullet weight. So this bullet was 113 grains. The recovered weight was 74.3 grains. The rest of the information I'll put up on the side notes. All right, the, the bullet did pretty good. Um, I was really surprised with it. Uh, I tested the 350 Legend. I liked the energy that it had. Not a very long grain cartridge. Uh, this this seems to be a gun that is very capable of shooting further than 200 but I probably wouldn't push past 200 mostly because velocity and energy energy um, at say 200 yards but the SST as you can see the SST bullets did pretty well they retained energy pretty well um, overall they I was pretty satisfied I would give them I don't know, 6 out of 10. Um, so I did like those. Alright, the next one was the Hornady Black in 123 grains. 
and I can't read my my handwriting. Um, the Hornet ESST was in 113. It was 123 grams. Uh, the reason why I say that is because it seems like the Hornady Black and the Hornady SST are using probably the same bullet weights, the bullet powders, primers, um, just the bullet construction itself was a little bit different. The reason why I say that, and I don't have a lot of evidence to back this, but when you look at the box, um, the box velocities and energies that they posted are either really different um, and they just decided to put the same numbers down or uh, they're using the same components to load these bullets and that's why they're so close because the, the velocities and energies and the bullet drop on these two cartridges are almost identical. Um, how are they shooting your gun? You know, that's that's debatable. Um, but overall, the Hornady Black kind of surprised me. Uh, I was really surprised at how well it did. A lot of the blacks that I've shot just seem to explode. Now, if you like a bullet that just explodes and dumps all of its energy um, in the varmint or the deer that you're shooting, the black is probably a really good bullet for that. And the SST is really, really good too. But I do think that the black is probably more known to dump all of its energy at one time in the cavity in, of the animal. So I did like it pretty well. It, it performed a little better than I thought that it would. Um, all of these bullets did penetrate through um, all five layers. So when I say five layers, that's three-eighths of, of sectionalized um, two-by-fours, uh, three-eighths thick, then two jugs full of water, um, another three-eighths sectionalized and when I say sectionalized, I took a two before I cut it 20-ish inches long and then sectioned it off into three-eighths inches thick. And the reason why I did that is to kind of give some of that same flex that a deer rib might have, uh, but still having the pretty close to the same uh, breaking point of what a rib might be is kind of how I got that. And then the fifth layer is the lid itself. Now, the bucket lids that I'm using are pretty durable. Um, but I reinforce those on both sides, inside and out, to kind of simulate, you know, the hide uh, tendons and such like that. So I feel like I've put a pretty good torture test on these bullets without just really going overboard with them. Um, having said that, the Hornady Black did really well, and all four of these uh, bullets that I shot uh, did really, really well. Um, so yes, the Hornady Black, the, the ballistics are very, very similar as you can see to what uh, the Hornady SSTs are. So moving on, um, this is a bullet that I have quite a few of. When uh, I bought this gun, it was kind of hard to find 6.5 Grendel ammo. As a matter of fact, it was find, hard to find ammo and components to reload with. Um, just in general. So I found these uh, PPU 120 grain hollow points. And I thought, you know, hollow pot points are a, a pretty reasonably uh, efficient bullet within range. I did not expect this gun to be a five, six, seven hundred yard gun. So uh, I, I was okay with buying these PPU 120 grain hollow points. They did really well. I was really surprised in general for what they would do. Um, I I can't say that I wouldn't um, take it deer hunting if I needed to. Uh, shot placement is the key with any gun and any bullet. But um, because that I could find these, I bought several boxes. Um, I generally like to have at least 100 rounds in just minimum for each gun. That's just me. I don't like having to go and buy um, two boxes this year and two boxes next year. I like having that same lot of bullets made, just in case there's any kind of differential in them. I know that if I've got a hundred rounds, that I'm good with my hunting bullets for several years. If I'm going to fire three to, to check zero, three to four throughout the year to uh, 
take animals with with that one particular gun. I probably got five to six years worth of ammo uh, put back that I know are all in the same lot. So they're all going to shoot the same. They're, they're going to be very consistent between each box. That's why I do that. Having said that, um, I threw these PPU 120 grain hollow points into the mix to just kind of get an idea of what the hollow points would do. And as you can see on the side, um, they did not do that bad. Um, drop was, you know, marginal. Um, Energy was pretty good. Uh, bullet weight, um, it, it wasn't the best at you know doubling its size and mushroom size, but there again, it, it did mushroom and it did pass through both sides pretty well. Um, looking at the jugs, if you watched the first video, they were pretty devastating um, to what the energy did inside of those jugs and through both sides of the wood. So. Yeah, I, I would think that it would do all right with um, hunting. Um, the ballistics, you can say on the side, uh, velocities, energies, uh, and bullet drop with these bullets. Now, last but not the least, um, every time that I test copper bullets, I've just become more and more impressed with them. Now, if, again, if you're somebody who likes a bullet like the SST or the Hornady Black that's going to dump the majority of its energy, if not all of its energy, in the animal itself, then you're probably going to like the copper bullets. Um, the downside to the copper bullets is um, they need a certain velocity and a certain energy in order to fully expand the way that they're supposed to. Now, when I looked at these, this was the Barnes TX TAC 115 grain copper bullet, uh, monolithic, whichever way you want to say it. Um, it performed really well, as you can see. Uh, ballistically, it did really well. It was the only bullet that actually just barely over doubled its, its diameter size. So from 6.5 to uh, 13.5. Four, um, the bullet did really well. Uh, the downside to this bullet is I, I do think that it probably shortens your length of hunting because of the velocity and energy. I couldn't find anywhere on Barnes, um, and I didn't take time to call and see, but the copper bullets really need a certain velocity and energy. Um, to be able to open up just like any bullet does, but the copper seems to be a little less than the um, uh, lead based bullets uh, or the ballistic tip type bullets. So I probably would limit, unless I could have evidence to justify shooting farther, I would probably back this gun up, this bullet, the copper bullet up to max of 175 just based on velocity and energy numbers that I give you. Um, the bullet did really well. It, 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 it passed through everything like nothing. Um, the depth of penetration in the water, even after the fact, was great. Uh, it really seemed to have a lot of energy left over after passing through uh, the target and the testing materials. So uh, I really, really did like the Barnes. Um, I'm going to have to go back and review uh, some of my notes on how the bullets um, shot through my gun. Um, that's, that's the key that I have in my guns. If these barns will keep us a, a one inch group, inch and an eighth group out of that Predator, I will probably stick with them out to 150, 175 yards. Um, but I'm pretty sure that they were pretty close to that um, one MOA, so I will probably stick with those as far as deer hunting. Um, as far as uh, coyote hunting with this gun, I'm probably going to go with the Hornady Blacks. That's that's the ones I really like, but if I'm in a pinch, the PPU 120 grain hollow points are going to do well. Please bear in mind as I finish this video up, 
um, that there are a lot of different manufacturers and there are several different kinds of bullet types. Uh, if you're going to look at this gun for deer hunting, I do like uh, the copper, but if you don't like copper, um, a bonded bullet is going to give you a little bit more penetration, a little bit more performance, so I would definitely stick with a bullet that is in a bonded um, type or style bullet. Um, anyways, so I hope that you got something out of this video. I enjoy doing this. I don't mean it talks long, but these numbers are important to me, and I really like uh, testing these bullets. I get some grief from people, you know, it's not consistent, it's not this, it's not that. So far, it's been pretty consistent. Anyways, uh, last but not least, um, I say most of the time, uh, love God, love your family, love your country, love hunting and outdoors, because those are the four keys um, that I live by. Um, if you do not know Christ as your Savior, I really do uh, want to suggest Him and help you find Him. He has been the difference maker in my life. I have hunted a lot, fished a lot, and enjoyed a lot of different things, including drugs, alcohol, and many other things. Um, and all of those things seem to never feel that emptiness, that missing piece inside of me. It's just like sand. They feel it for just a little while. And like sand through your hands, it just runs out and it's gone. And I'm looking for something else to feel that. But Jesus really has been the difference maker in my life. He is the reason why I can have joy and peace even in the struggles, the hard times, the bad times, because I know Jesus Christ um, is the answer. And this is just a testing place on earth. But while we're here, I want us to be able to enjoy, and I want you guys to see how much that I enjoy life as a Christian. So until next time, I bring all that up because, um, you know, we're coming up on the season of the resurrection of my Savior uh, called Easter. Um, bunnies and chocolate and all that's great, but the real important factor was Jesus Christ. Resurrection. That's, that's the key. If it hadn't been for his resurrection, it had just been another name in history. Um, until next time, please... If you like these videos, comment, subscribe, share. I know they're not the best, but I do enjoy sharing these videos. So uh, until next time, have a blessed and wonderful week.